Yeah. Christ. Woo! Long way. That's how you do it, baby. OK. Oh, my God! Or as my nan calls it, yeah. <laughs> Being as she is, long since dead. <laughs> Our calamitous comedians are hurtling ever faster towards a total loss of credibility. So please, give them an uplifting cheer as we welcome back Joanne McNally! <laughs> John Robin! <laughs> Nick Mohammed! <laughs> Sophie Willen! <laughs> and Steve Pemberton! Next to me, a man who confided in me that he finds his neighbour's wife hot as hell and twice as spicy. <laughs> Specifically, the neighbours to the left, if you're looking at the house from the road. <laughs> That's the worst ever one. She is nice, she says. They watch the show. Yep. You just said you like it when she puts the washing out. <laughs> Hi, Greg. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm great. I'm great, actually, now. You're thinking about her? No. Pegging those... <laughs> pegging those sheets up. Anyway, I've got some statistics for you. Yep. Uh, from the channel about how people watch the show. So this is interesting. OK. 20% of people apparently now watch it on a device, like a mobile or a juicer. Um, we've got six... <laughs> 64% of people, most people, project it onto a sort of large, large building into a, in a town. Um, <laughs> normally a big hall. And yeah. uh, the other 16%, traditional flat screen TV still. Right. Uh, but on the floor and looking down there and dancing around it with some music on. That's um, <laughs> some statistics about the show. Ready? OK. Yep, that was my bit. All right, we're off to an absolute buzzing start. <laughs> right, what's the prize category this week, Alex? It's the best thing for a person that is meant for an animal. OK. Greg will give the best thing five points, and Greg will give the worst thing one point. John, I'm starting with you. Well, I wanted to get something that was fitting of a man of your standing and stature. Lovely. So I have brought an elephant chair. Mm. Yes, here it is. It's called a howdah. Ooh. 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 I sort of actually like it, though. <laughs> it's meant for an elephant's back, and you would sit on it on long journeys in the past. However... Sorry? Yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> God, I mean, I genuinely did imagine an elephant with a bad back sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> However, they are uh, quite cruel to be used on elephants. They're damaging to their skin and their back. Yes. So, by taking one off the open market, I feel we're all doing a little bit of good today. Wow. So, if I give this five points, I'm, I'm taking one for the elephant team. Big time, big time. You're sending out a message. You're welcome, big ears. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what have you brought in? You know when a pet is ill yes. and you give it one of those cones? To stop... So one of those. I just think one of those for a human, if you had, like, an itch or something, you could wear one on your hand to prevent you from <laughs> itching. Shall I show you his cone that he's brought in? Thank you. I mean, you. you can if you want, but I already know... <laughs> I already know what, how many points it's getting. Yeah. <laughs> I already regret it, Greg. Here's the cone. It's not going to be a surprise, one. but there you go. <laughs> Oh, well, cheers, Nick. It's, Thank uh, you. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Steve. It's uh, a scratching brush. Here is your um, scratching brush. Now, this promotes skin health, uh, gets rid of parasites. And um, I was imagining you in the shower. Were you? <laughs> yes. But before the task was set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got one of these attached to your towel rail. Yes. And, um, yeah, you go up and down on that and you, uh, give yourself a good scratch. <laughs> you've imagined that I have some difficult skin to slew off, have you? <laughs> no, it's skin health. It's an impressive load of bullshit for a brush. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne. Yes? Uh, can you beat a brush? Yes, you can. The present <laughs> I've brought you this week, Greg, is a trough. <laughs> <laughs> Here is, here is Joanne's trough. <laughs> Meant for an animal, but b better for a human. <laughs> yes. It's both insulting and yet appeals. <laughs> Keep talking. 
People are going back to the earth, building their own vegetable patches. I feel the trough is next. Is it? <laughs> You're imagining trough parties, are yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all very Bear Grylls survival. Is it? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's very... <laughs> <laughs> you know, lads, they love making their own ham. This is, I feel like... <laughs> this is what's next. It'll we be like... We often make our own ham. <laughs> We're always making our own ham. <laughs> it's all, they're all going back to the land with the moustaches and eating off the ham hock and all, and I feel like <laughs> this is next. <laughs> Sophie, come on. I've gone in a different direction. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a pet feeder. Yes, yeah, one of these timed cat feeders. Here it timed is. Timed cat oh, yeah. feeder. Oh. I thought it could be quite good for you. For me? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit of discipline and structure in your life. <laughs> I mean, basically, what you're saying in that prize is you're saying, I think you're fat. <laughs> I was worried about fat shaming. Yeah. I did ask the producer. They said, no, no, it'll be fine. He needs to hear it. <laughs> Well, I'll hand out some, some uh, points. OK, you're going to start with the... With Nick, correct. Right. <laughs> so Nick gets one point. Steve, sorry, two points. There we go, OK. Oh. I don't want Sophie to be in control of when I can have a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, so I'm giving her three points. OK, three to you, uh -huh. Sophie. It's something about these young lads munching <laughs> on the ham hocks that got me. <laughs> Joanne, four points. And uh, I just want the elephant chair, so... Fair enough. Five points to John Robbins. <laughs> Let's have a task proper, shall we? I don't want to alarm you, Greg, but there's something mysterious lurking in our tent. <gasps> Hi, Joanne. Hi, John. Hello, Alex. You're taking extreme measures to keep the sun off your face. Yeah, I feel like I should be in Gilead or something. I feel like I'm in Handmaiden's Tail. Hey, Alex. Hello, Nick. How are you? Wowzers. Work out who is following you. Oh. Oh, gosh. Work out who is following you. You must stare at the duck at all times. Yes? and take an average length step towards the duck every time it quacks. If the person following you agrees with you, they will say the name of a mammal. If the person following you disagrees with you, they will say the name of a bird. If the person following you doesn't know if they agree or disagree with you, they will say the na name of an amphibian, of course. I have very little animal experience. Why have you got so little animal experience? Because I didn't study zoology. I don't know what an amphibian is. Right. The correct answer furthest from the duck wins. Your time starts when the duck quacks. When I say now, press the green button. OK. I'm going to release the follower. You need to keep looking at the duck. All right. <laughs> OK, Steve, you may press the green button. Oh! I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Don't start yet. Ow. Are you OK? Yes. Joanne, tell me about your lack of experience with animals. Isn't that terrible? I don't know what an amphibian is. Yeah. What is it? It's like a fishy. It's like you know what? You don't know what it is. like a lizard. An amphibian has an aquatic gill-breathing larval stage followed by typically a terrestrial lung-breathing adult stage. Mm. Yes, OK. <gasps> Newts, salamanders and, obviously, cachylions. Love them. <laughs> Let's go. We begin with keen golfer John Robbins being chased by a keen golf trolley. Wait for the quack. Are you a man? Badger. Are you a sportsman? Crane. Are you a actor? Kiwi. Are you a politician? Turtle dove. Are you famous? Wildebeest. Are you a chef? Common ostrich. I don't know what. Are you a comedian? Buddy duck. Well, are you are you human? Typical pigeon. Are you a male? Are you an animal? Yellow hammer. Are you a robot? Gouldian finch. So you're. Oh, hang on. You're male, but you're not human, and you're not an animal. 
Are you some kind of connection? For, like, a, 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 are you a cable? Short tailed tree creeper. Uh, does your name begin with A? Emu. Does your name begin with B? Olive baboon. And you're not human. Are you a human? Californian condor. Do you have genitals? Tony Crossfrog. That's ambiguous. How is that ambiguous? Is your second letter of your name an R? Grey parrot. An L. Capybara. Uh, is the third letter a vowel? Malayan tapir. Is it A? Golden pheasant. Is it E? Is it I? O? Pygmy hippopotamus. OK, so B, L, O. Are you Mr Blobby? Battery and camel. Yeah, so you're Mr Blobby. You may have a look. Fucking hell. Not bad. Come on, you. Let's get you home. Well done, John. Well, I guess we should briefly discuss, are you a cable? <laughs> <laughs> cable is surely the only thing that's not human that has a gender, like oh. male to female connections. Oh, I see, OK. Oh, wow. So I thought it might be a scart lead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he got there. He was 19 paces from the duck. OK, let's see how Steve and Joanne got on with, to quote Joanne from episode one, the best physical comedian of our generation. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, it's good being a man, isn't it? Badger. Are you a human? Kiwi. Is a kiwi a mammal? What the fuck is a kiwi? Keep stepping, Joanne. <laughs> So, reading the news, do you enjoy that? Vulturing guinea fowl. Another step, please, Steve. OK. Every quack. Are you... food? Locus go. Are you a famous thing? Badger. Are you the Eiffel Tower, like something like that? Tony Frogmouth. What else is there? Being operated by another human is tough, right? Hairy-eared dwarf lemur. Can I get inside you? Are you a glove puppet? Gordian Finch. Are you some kind of children's TV character? Pygmy Jaboa. A Jaboa? Please step. <laughs> Do you have a one word name? Northern Shoveler. Oh, is it Mr. Something? Rondon Wolf Bush Baby. Okay, Mr. Something. Have I met you? Have I been in you? <laughs> Common Midwife Toad. What's that? We don't know if you've met him or her. It says, it's been on tally. Olive Baboon. Are you Mr Blobby? Donkey. What's that? Amphibian. Does that mean they don't know if they're Mr Blobby? Sorry, her replies are more confusing than anything else. Is it B, C, D, F, G, H? Eurasian Lynx. Is it B, C? Etruscan Shrew. So, it's, is it B? Slender Loris. Mr. B, Mr. Bojangles. Are you Mr. Blobby? Bengal Tiger. That's a tiger. Agrees. Mr. Blobby. Exotic short hair cat. I'm stopping there because I think I'm right. So you are Mr. Blobby? Fuck off. Oh my god! <laughs> Come on, Blob. I don't want him. It's coming for you, baby. <laughs> well, Steve, <laughs> if someone said Mr B, I wouldn't have gone Bojangles. Hearing the quacks with the, the Handmaid's Tale bonnet on, thinking about statements that had to be not questions, <laughs> being chased by Mr fucking Blobby... <laughs> Is you. <laughs> but like John, I only came up with the sort of alphabet thing when the duck was pretty close. 15 paces from the duck. Joanne. Yeah. It's quite the contrast to the forensic things <laughs> we've seen so far. Uh huh. Uh, is a kiwi a mammal? <laughs> Pause. What's a fucking kiwi? Yeah. <laughs> and then you went, if you're not human, <laughs> you must be the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Then your next question was, 
can I get inside you? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, is it a building? Ah. You know, can I step inside you? Not can I, like, penetrate you? It was like... <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah. But you were kind of hurling out just objects and then suddenly blobby. Yeah. And that's because your go-to thing is blob. I genuinely am a really big Mr Blobby fan. I think he's amazing. I tried to buy his outfit. Remember he went on sale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the woman's blobby obsessed. <laughs> And it really helped. She got to the correct answer much before the other two. She got 26 steps away from the duck, and that was after not believing it was Blobby. She carried on stepping for quite a while after getting the correct answer, <laughs> and she was overjoyed when she turned around and saw her hero. Right. So, uh, yeah, at the moment, it's Joanne, then John, then Steve. Finally, how long will it take Nick and Sophie to work out that Mr Blobby's following them? Here we go. Um... Have you got blonde hair? Kiwi. Kiwi? That's a fruit. Are you, um, uh, human? Kiwi. Are you smaller than a large tree? Donkey. Are we friends from school? No, no, no. Uh, did I meet you in the last five years? Common midwife toad. <sighs> Do you have four legs? Californian condor. Do you have two legs? Bengal tiger. Are you over 30? Donkey. OK. Have you used an Excel sheet? <laughs> Look a skull. Are you on TV? Big Me Jaboa. Are you on BBC? Happy Barra. <laughs> oh, no, this duck's approaching. Have we ever been drunk together? <laughs> Common mud puppy. That means yeah, I think, doesn't it? Oh, I can't wait. the duck, you can just keep sort of pacing out the duck and we'll just do it on time instead. Uh, British? Pygmy hippopotamus. Oh, you are British. Are you an athlete? Northern Shubbler. Are you a cartoon character? Are you a big grasshopper? Are you a mascot of some kind? Are you on the box of any kind of food-related stuff? Is it Alex? <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I think you're just going to stay here with the duck. Am I? All right, OK. Are you on a particular time of day? Mid-afternoon? Crane. Early evening? Possum. OK. Right. Like I can take the duck where I want. If you want, yeah. Oh! Oh! I'm so sorry, I saw him. <laughs> I saw him! It's Mr Blobby! Good meet you, Bella. You're welcome to say hello to Mr Blobby. Yeah, thank you, God! BBC, larger than a human but smaller than a large tree, walks on two legs. <laughs> BB on BBC One. <laughs> Pangolin. OK. <laughs> What's on at that time? <laughs> Mr Blobby. Pink fairy armadillo. Yay! <laughs> the impression I've got, um, Nick, is that you yeah. asked every question <laughs> about every subject ever yes. <laughs> before you arrived at Blobby. Yeah, well, that was, I mean, just to do it by process of elimination, I guess that's what that was. By eliminating everything in the world. <laughs> in, the, well, in the universe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the question, are you smaller than a large tree? Because <laughs> <laughs> how tall is a tree? A tree can be very well, so. uh, I mean, w uh, one of the great philosophical questions <laughs> of our time. <laughs> how large is large? How large is large? You're larger large. than me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was there a logic to Sophie's questions? <laughs> I've written some down. Have I met you in the last five years? <laughs> Have I got drunk with you? <laughs> Have you used an Excel sheet? <laughs> I mean, you literally sound like a dropped Alexa. <laughs> I just thought you were going to do something a bit like surprise, surprise. I, I thought you were going to... I thought it could have been my mate Amy, to be honest. Right. I was really thinking she was going to pop out. And then yeah. we, we mounted her on a golf trolley. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Sophie can't have a point, can she, cos she saw Blobby. Oh. You're terrible, actually. Fucking tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like the points? Yes. Well, it's Sophie, unfortunately, zero. Two points to Nick, three to Steve, four to John, but the winner, the future Mrs Blobby, is Joanne Manelli. <laughs> I see a scoreboard, please. At the bottom, and it's been typical of the series so far, we've got Sophie and Nick with three points. At the top, it's John and Joanne, both with nine points.
Good. What's next? Oh, oh no, it's childcare. Hi. Hi, and congratulations. Thank you. This takes me back. Have you worn one of them before? Well, in my head, it's a bulletproof vest. <laughs> and I am Detective Robbins, homicide. Oh, hi, Joanne. <laughs> What's going on? You've got to look after a baby. What is that? I'll pop her or him in. I can't remember the gender. Oh, God. Ah. Oh. There we go. Nothing to be frightened of. This is actually quite comfortable. Good. Nice on the shoulders. Complete the jobstacle course. Each job must be completed to a satisfactory quality level. The baby must remain in the baby carrier at all times, except during nappy change. Yes. Yes. You must complete the jobstacle course within eight minutes. The least babies filled wins. I'd actually like to spill a bit of us. <laughs> we want a wet baby and a dry Steve. Your time starts when Alex blows his whistle. Oh, God. Nick looks terrified of the baby. I've got three kids. Have you really got three kids? Yeah, Jenny, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> Let's crack on. All right, then. The first to look after the big wet baby are Joanne and Sophie. I think my approach is going to be to glide swift, fast and smooth, like a swan. Do the dishes. They're in the caravan. I am curious about motherhood, so I think this will be good for me. Yeah, this will be a good test. Like a swan. <laughs> Daddy horn hanging around outside here, fuck all. That's it. Done. Oh, this is unfortunate. Oh, no. Alex, pick up the basket. Pick up the basket. And the thing. I can't pick up the thing. Bend from the knees. No. <laughs> oh. uh, his shoes need cleaning now. <clears throat> Stay to your shoes, Greg. I'm trying to raise a jug of water here. <laughs> There's a suffragette turn in her grave somewhere. Fabulous. Done. OK. Does your big work baby have a name? Juicy. <laughs> Get in. Get in. This is why women breastfeed, cos this is a pain in the hell. <laughs> What's your own baby? Yeah. Is the last one done? Yeah. Whack it in, whack it in. Thank you. I think it's very impressive, Joanne, for you to make points about the patriarchy. <laughs> when you've got a bucket of water strapped to you. Any excuse. Can you tell me statistics about who was the most effective parent? Sophie spilt a fifth of her baby. You used some of the baby to clean the shoes with. Uh, <laughs> I spilled some out at the start, cos yeah. I was like, that's gonna go anyway, might as well get rid of it. Not stressing. Speed up. Yeah, you only spilled a sixth of your baby, so, um, well. you are currently in the lead, Joanne. Next up, it's two dads of three. It's Nick and it's Steve. <laughs> OK, let's do the shoes first. Oh, God. All right, here we go. For... Oh, what am I going to clean them with? Oh, I can't use the baby. Sorry, baby. Just... I'm patting the baby's head. Baby's fine, though. Oh! Baby's fine. You're not cleaning with the baby at all, are you? A little bit of her went in the, um, in the soapy water. With a ring on her fingers and bells on her toes. <laughs> I think your baby's been sick. Hang the laundry twixt the cow and the caravan. Bit of baby spilt on your knee, then. Yeah, but that... Oh, a, oh, a lot of... Oh. That's handy. I'm assuming I have to create my own line, yeah? To hang the... Sure, yeah. <laughs> laundry. Da, 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 da. There we go. Is that... Are you satisfied with that? Well, yeah. Yeah? So I hang the laundry, dust the carpet. Oh, was that dusting the carpet? <laughs> OK, best way to dust the carpet. <laughs> Satisfied? No. 
Oh, baby's not happy with this. Yay. Thirsty? Oh, there we go. Now let's get that nap nap changed. Yeah, she loves that. There you go, that's not bad. Yeah. You've got three seconds left. Uh, love you. To actual fathers and uh, with very <laughs> contrasting approaches. <laughs> Nick, you seem a very cautious and caring parent, I thought. Yeah. Did Nick spill a lot of baby? Yes, Nick spilt a quarter of his baby, whereas Steve, in the end, only 7% of baby spilt. Who would have thought that you would come across in this competition as a more effective parent by force feeding <laughs> your baby? <laughs> I feel like I have to apologise to my own children now if that was anything like the upbringing they had. Yeah. <laughs> Last up, Ron Jobbins. What are you going to do first, John? Well, I'm going to take the baby out of this. It must stay in the baby carrier. It must remain in the baby carrier. But the baby carrier doesn't have to remain on me. There we go. Right. Do the dishes. Caravan. Dishes done. Thank you, Greg. Dust the carpet. Four minutes left. Four minutes. Never done this before. The way my life's going, I'll probably never do it again. <laughs> oh. A lot easier without a baby on your front. Oh, it's so much easier. And honestly, that baby has been driving me crazy. <laughs> One minute left, John. Just take a bit of care with this, Alex. How much more time have I got? Five, four, three, two. Thank you. <laughs> if anything, it was a tad smug. <laughs> You know, fast, wasn't it? Yeah, and it wasn't even about that. There was zero percentage of the baby spilt. Oh, don't leave a silence where there's a butt coming and you... <laughs> no, there's no butt. I'm just allowing you to enjoy it. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. How long do you want to give him to enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> we give him ten more seconds, shall we? <laughs> No, I unfortunately don't have another VT. He has genuinely nailed it. I know he has. Yeah. <laughs> so the points are Nick gets one, Sophie two, Joanne three, Steve four, five points to John Robbins. Well done, John. <laughs> OK, what's next, please, Alex? You're going to like this, Greg. We started off in a tent and now we're going to be intense. Intense. <laughs> you... Yeah? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Hello. You okay? <gasps> Have you seen something bad? Have you had an accident? <laughs> mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Create tension. You've just given me a masterclass. Create tension. Oh! You were acting and you did it well. Most tension created wins. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Have you started the attempt? I've started. This is tension. Yeah. So, like, just make it really awkward. What do you think of my tension that I created? Didn't feel tense. No, no, oh well. Give it a two out of ten. Right. Tension. Sexual tension. 
Mm, gonna need some kind of elasticated roping. I would like to challenge you to a duel of hangman. It's not quite working, that, is it? Mm. A tablecloth. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna get some bits and bobs. This will be interesting, because I know how to make you tense. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I'm not going to be the only one, I suspect. Let's go. First of all, we're going to see three lots of tension makers, Sophie, John and Joanne. Tension. What is tension? Tension is the apprehension that something bad's going to happen, isn't it? It's tense, we're worried. Alex, sit with me. Sit down beside me. Yeah? Actually, no, actually, hop up here, hop up. Face, facing you? Like this? This is perfect, yeah. Just go relax? No, don't relax. No. I want you on edge. In order to actually measure the tension, we've got both analog and digital tension scales. <laughs> like, so, like, tight, tight road walking, but on a chair. Yeah. What's your salary? Don't lie. Don't lie to your mother. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Increase the tension. Oh! Alex, stand firm. Let's take a reading. Alex, that's 10 kilos of tension. Our genitals are not tension, just to be clear. Sadly. Can I say something? I don't feel the need to say anything. <laughs> Two minutes left. Tense. It's so good. It's like my father's alive again. Yeah. My father's anniversary today, Dad, 21 years. How is it? He smells just like him. <laughs> what am I doing with the net, John? What are you doing there? You're catching the marble of certain death. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. And there you go, the marble of certain death, caught by Alex under pretty extreme tension here. That's 10 kilos of tension. That's your time up, John. Thank you. Four. One second, John. My whistle's right down here, though. Excuse me? Ignore the whistle. It's just me and you now. I've got to get the whistle. I've asked the cameraman to leave. Stop <laughs> it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Don't even look me in the eye ever again. Thank you, Ryan. I told you someone would crack the code. <laughs> <laughs> consent at every point. Every point there was consent. There was. What the audience didn't hear is what you said as you uh, walked out, which was, never look at me again. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie, watching you um, <laughs> standing on one leg with a cup on your head, hissing like a fucking snake, <laughs> is the least tense I've ever felt. <laughs> You've never been in that position, cos you're always taller, aren't you? But yeah. actually having somebody... <laughs> <laughs> well, let me... Let me... Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sit, if you sit on the floor... John, he took a very literal version of tension. Did he create much tension? Well, yes, one kilogram on Earth <laughs> is 9.8 newtons of tension, we know this, and you had we 10 kilos, so it was, yeah, it was 98 newtons of tension he created, which is about the same as a small monkey sw swinging on a, on a tree. <laughs> I 
heavy is the monkey? <laughs> it said a small monkey. How many pounds of tension did he create? But t <laughs> tension's not measured in stones or pounds. It's not measured in monkeys, mate. It's measured in... <laughs> Who's left? Next up, time to vamp up the tension with Nick Mohammed. Ooh. How long, Alex? One minute, Nick. <laughs> That's why I intended. And that, then go there with that. We'll do with that. And just a little, little finish. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. See you later. The old egg misses the glass trick, yeah, eh? No. That was genuinely stressful just re-watching that. <laughs> yeah, there was tension there. I've got to say, it's not looking bad for you on this one. Oh, great. Yeah, and bear in mind... ..who you see. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we've come to the end of our Create Tension task, and it ends with me versus Steve at Hangman. Impressive production. Mm. Amazing. The tension <laughs> in that room between Alex and I, and the no vowels hangman rule, that really upped it 50%. Mm. It did. Mm. It was electric. <laughs> if I were to pick perhaps a small criticism, yogurt, cheese, and hot sauce sounds quite nice. <laughs> right, Sophie's getting one point. Then there's a gulf between Sophie and the others. So we jump up to three points. Right, who's getting three points? John is. I felt tense with Nick and with Steve. Mm. Steve, I felt deliberately tense. And with Nick, I felt his gross incompetence was... <laughs> ..as a magician was going to result in someone being hurt. Mm. So I can draw a parallel there and say four points for both. But we all know where the most tension was in the room. Yeah. And it was a grown woman sniffing your beard. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so five points to Joanne, and that's it. <laughs> Scoreboard, boy. Right, OK, well, unfortunately, Sophie, that means you've only got six points, whereas John and Joanne are in the lead with 17 points. Mm. <laughs> All right, then. Please, can you vacate your chairs, head to the stage for the final task of the show! <laughs> Who's going to read the task out? Joanne McNally, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, Alex. Don't look at me. <laughs> Catch the most monsters in your boxes. The monsters must propel themselves from the table. Most monsters in boxes after two minutes wins. And I should also say, if you catch one in your arm, that's worth one monster. In your hat, that's worth two monsters. It's three on the leg, four on the back bucket, five on the shoulder. Isn't the leg one a bit unfair? Someone's got an advantage. <laughs> 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 OK, so it's two minutes, Greg. Let's dance. And they're off. Oh. <laughs> it's hard to even get oh. How do you do it? They're not bouncing. Sophie. <laughs> 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 Nick is pulling away here. <laughs> Twenty-four seconds. How are you over there? Yes. Table. Tip that table. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Oh! Can I clarify one from you, Greg? You did say in the task the monsters must propel themselves from the table. Are we happy that the stage is a table for Sophie? I mean, as an act of charity, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to quickly count the monsters. We have one in the top. That's two monsters for Joanne. Lovely. We have one in the top. We also have two bucket monsters, so that's a total Ooh. of ten monsters. Wow. That's a lot of monsters. <laughs> we have two in the leg. That's six monsters. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, the arm is the lowest scoring. There are six in there, which is also a total of six monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There is one in the hat and there are two in the bucket, so that's a total of ten monsters. <laughs> So, why don't you all come down here and we'll see what that's done to the final scores. <laughs> Greg, I need to show you a couple of things. Oh, good. Is it related to the show? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I need to uh, get your judgement on a couple of little bits I caught during the task. Some impropriety. <laughs> You need that. You need them, otherwise you can't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, have a look up here. The first thing I saw was this. Great armor. Oh. Oh. Thirty seconds. Oh. Outrageous. Yes. Yeah, so do you want to dock him one monster or more? Oh, I mean, he's disqualified from the whole. Oh. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just dock him one point. Yeah. One monster's gone. And then it's whether or not Steve's final hat monster was before or after the whistle. Well, it was about three years after. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a lot of tension in that decision. Is there? So that means Joanne uh, is last with the two monsters, and it's Nick with five, Sophie with six, Steve with eight, and John takes all five points for the ten monsters. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Excited what that's done to the final scoreboard because so far only Steve has won, of course. Correct. In this episode, Joanne. Was pipped to the post. She got 18 points and John got 22 points. <laughs> John Robbins is the winner of episode three. Going down with your alternative animal accessories. <laughs> so, what have we learned from today's show? Well, we've learned that everyone finds themselves in tense situations. A difficult negotiation, perhaps. A feud with a neighbour. An argument with a partner. But remember, there's always a way to diffuse that awful tension. 
and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> But there's only one real winner tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and that is John Robin! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.